Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation based on mundane topics to help you just sort of chill, relax, and push all your thoughts into a corner while you listen to I like us. thinking of them as marginally interesting. Sure. Just interesting enough. Just interesting enough that you can push away whatever else you have going on. Like an episode of Seinfeld. Sure, sure. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. And Amanda, we're coming a day late for the podcast episode. And a dollar short. Well, I don't know about a dollar short, but certainly a day late. (laughs) That's for sure. (laughs) Uh, And that's because we had a busy day yesterday. We did. And it ended with something wonderful that you had planned a while back. And at the time I was like shrugging my shoulders with a if you want to. And then I was so glad last night when we were coming home that we did it. I'm so happy to hear that. And we should explain what it was to our listeners. Do you want me to explain? Yeah, you explain it because you kind of discovered it and then we we did it. Not you discovered it, but you... I know what will happen. Okay. I'm going to get deep into this explanation. You're going to say this is too much. No, you do it. I'm not going to... Well, Marco used to work for a TV network called TLN. This is definitely too much, but anyways, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to go back. back. Which stands for Tele, Tele Latino Network, Yeah, right? Uh, it's local to Canada, but even more so, it's really local to Toronto. Certain cable packages or satellite dishes back in the day would get it, uh, where I grew up in New Brunswick. But uh, anyway, Marco worked there for a while as a young, as a young Marco. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Every now and then, we find we put it on every now and then. There's some eclectic programming. Sure. Um, it was started by what I've now learned was a very iconic Toronto figure. You're conflating two things, TLN. Oh, I am. You are conflating and what, two. And what was, and, and well, Chin. And Chin, yeah. But the Chin show is on TLN. No, it's not. It's not? No, What's it on? Conf- no, no. It's on City. Really? Yeah. Chin, sure? yeah, 100%. Oh. Well, now I'm really confused. Anyway, yeah. we were watching Italian programming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and more specifically, we were watching Toronto Italian programming on Sunday. And there is a show that is on every Sunday, although there's some debate in the studio over what network it airs on. But anyway, um, and it is a very well-known Italian TV show. It's a Sunday afternoon program that features variety of music and local goings on in the Itali- in the world of Italian Ontario. Right. Is that safe Canadians. to say? Sure. Yeah. I think that's that's safe to say. Which, you know, tends to be in the Toronto area. And they have international artists and they yeah. have and they have festivals that are going on. We just happen to be home on But a usually it's a, it was started by an Italian and it's Italian based. Right. This particular show is Italian based anyway. That's right. And we have stuff that we happen to have it on. We were home one weekend when we're usually not home. It's true. And I put it on so Amanda could listen and... It just happened to be on, Mm -hmm. and I guess she put it on, and it was at the start of the program, and they were giving away a gift basket. Right. And you had to email. there's, There's nothing I love more than a contest, but what I really love is a contest where I don't think a lot of people are applying, and that my stakes are good. So I thought... There might not be a lot of people watching this what show. What was in this basket you could win? Pasta, coffee. That was the big seller for me. There was Ely coffee, so Italian coffee, pasta, and more coffee. Probably some I think there were some jams and chocolates. Yeah. Anyway. So I the, it was maybe the 70 bucks <laughs> worth of goods. But I really wanted to win this gift basket. So we answered the question and we emailed the email we were supposed to email. Do you remember what the question was? Yeah, it was who was the first mayor, or who was the longest mayor of Toronto? Because it was the day before the Toronto's mayoral election. Right, okay, so it was who was the longest standing mayor in the city? Which the answer we found out that day is Art Eggleton. Right. We didn't. I didn't know that, but anyway, so we then were like, when are they going to announce the winner? So we ended up watching I think three hours of this program. I don't think it was that long, but sure felt like three hours. We watched a lot of the program. And what they were promoting was a film festival. Oh, the contest was for the, the contest to win the little basket was for the film festival? I think it was tied into the film okay. festival. That makes sense because the sponsors. Actually, it doesn't make sense because the sponsor was a different coffee company. Oh, okay. The big competitor 
because they had Ely Coffee. Right. Neither sponsors this program, so I think we can okay. speak freely. They had Ely Coffee in the basket, but the festival is sponsored by Lavazza. Two, two brands of coffee that I really like. Arch rivals. And yet very tasty. Yes. And so um, they had a, an artist who had a film in the festival. And they were talking about this festival. And it looked great. And we have... It, I thought it was an Italian film festival. But now I'm not sure because there's films from all over the world in it. Right. But it's called the Inclu City Festival. That's what it's called? Yeah. Because <laughs> it used to be called the Italian-Canadian Film Festival. I think so. Okay, I see. But now it's called, like, inclusivity, but right. it's in, inclu and then the word city. I see. Festival. Okay. The ICFF. Okay. And, or film festival. And uh, anyway, the general concept is you go and you see these films under the stars. They're outdoor films. And now it used to be somewhere else, but... It used to be like a drive-in. It used to be an Ontario place. Right. Which is a whole other topic for discussion, right. but maybe, I don't know when it started being at the distillery district, but in any event, that's where it is now. And so, what we didn't... Well, there's lots we didn't I know. should mention to our listeners, the distillery, distillery district is an area of Toronto that used to house a big distillery back in the... 1920s, I want to say 30s, 40s, 50s. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of fell out of fashion or fell or didn't distill anymore. I don't know what you would call it. And that whole area became uh, abandoned. Yeah, it was like decommissioned. Decommissioned. It was a place called Guterham and Warts, which was its own brand of whiskey, apparently. Right. And uh, so that area became, that part of the city wasn't really frequented or didn't have a lot of development until, I want to say the 90s. Well, what happened was they used, they used it for filming. So the musical, the movie musical Chicago was filmed largely there. Because you have to picture it's like a pre-industrial or industrial area that had cobblestone st uh, steps or, or cobbles, cobblestones, mm -hmm. and it had those um, chimneys that mm -hmm. are very square that are indicative of a style of architecture, and I can't think of what that architecture is, but anyways. Right. So they've built that. Luckily, they didn't tear it down, as Toronto likes to do, but they decided to uh, revitalize that area. Yeah, it has a very... Um Victorian, Victorian. To, to be honest, it. almost Dickensian because it's because it's factories, mm -hmm. um, sort of feel about it, and uh, it's all cobblestone and brick, and um, and uh, similar to the meatpacking district. Did you say that? I, no, I didn't. But you're a hundred percent. Yeah, right. in New York, yes. if people know that one a bit more readily, and and lots of districts in cities sure. around the world that sure. were industrial places or places where, you know, not considered as nice or even a bit shabby, um, but luckily have been preserved in time and actually seem quite historic and quaint. Sure. Uh, and obviously very gentrified. Uh, and dis the distillery district is exactly that in Toronto. So, yeah, I don't know when it, when it transformed from abandoned factory to arts hub i'm gonna say the 90s because that's when yeah. it sort of came on my radar mm -hmm. but possibly before that and mm -hmm. i was just too young to really i don't think so because i don't even when i moved to the city i don't remember which was in 2000 i don't remember anybody raving about it well, but I, a theater I, went in there i don't even remember Growing up thinking that would be an area I would go to in the yeah. city. so Or that it's an even an area that was mentioned. Well, it's a lovely area. That but has, now it's lovely, yes. It has these open, I'm going to call them piazzas. It's almost like a, a square. That town has, squares. Yeah, town of. squares. Yeah. And it has more than one, which I discovered yesterday. But mm -hmm. the one big main one is where they have the winter market that we often talk about on our holiday yes. episodes. Yes. So you may have heard us Lane mention ways, it. Laneways. Um, some of the old factories now are... Are places for theater companies right. and and pottery uh, chocolate, vendors, chocolate. And chocolate vendors, and yeah, like buildings with arts organizations in them, and then also wonderful shops. Expensive to go to. leather shoe. Yes, Fluvog shoes. If anyone knows Fluvog shoes, that's their fine. hub. Out of there, fine sold shoes. Yes. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, very beautiful. The Soul Pepper Theater Company is based out of there, as is many other things. So uh, Nightwood Theater, I believe, is based out of there as well, uh, for those who follow the Toronto theater scene. But anyway, um, beautiful area. And so they are hosting for three weeks this film festival that has Italian roots, but seems to have branched out to films from all over the world. Right. With, I think with a strong Italian base though. Sure. Because I would say probably 50% at least of those films are Italian. I thought it was, I thought the ICF stood for Italian Canadian film festival. That's why when you said pick a film, I just Mm -hmm. assumed it was going to be an Italian film that I was picking. And we did. We picked a film. Amanda kept, she was, she presented me with different options and she's like, do you want to go to this film festival? I'm like, Okay. My my thought was, this is something I've wanted to do for a few years, mm-hmm. and we haven't organized ourselves enough to do it. It's been challenging to do anything for the last few years, so we just thought, you know what? We can do it. Let's go. And I, I said, I don't care what film it is. The only thing I care about is that we go and we participate and watch a film there. So Amanda presented a bunch of different films to me. And the film I really wanted to see was the Tarantella film, like the history and the origins of the Tarantella dance. But we're not around on the day that that's showing. Mm-hmm. So then I debated between a few and I said, let's go see the documentary on Perugino, mm-hmm. who is a famous artist. You'll see his works in Italy when you're there, but he's not as famous as his contemporaries. And so I wanted to know more about Perugino, the artist, uh, because I know his contemporaries, his, uh, you know, rena- Renaissance contemporaries like mm-hmm. Da Vinci, Raffaello, or Raphael, mm-hmm. um, and the other ones, Botticelli, Donatello, Donatello, Donatello well, yeah. yeah. Botticelli, yeah. Yeah, so all those, all those people, right? So I said, let's go see that one. And Amanda's like, all right, done. And she ordered the tickets. I did. And then said, you know, we have some friends that I think would like to join us. And so we messaged them and they said, Absolutely. We will come, and why don't we make a night of it and, and go to a beautiful, amazing Mexican uh, restaurant and bar in, in that area. It's okay. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it's I all think right. it's pretty Do incredible, you, yeah, no, see, because of the vast size of it. Sure. Those high ceilings, and, yeah. and it's very Mexico City versus, like, you know, a Yucatan. That's true. Right. That's yeah. true. You're right. And, the, and I have to say, I had... Two margaritas, two and a half margaritas, because I had some of yours, and they were f- fantastic. I've had great times there, and the patio is phenomenal. I mean, it's massive. Sure. Uh, it's called El Catrin. Anyone who's still with us and wants to look it up. Uh, so we uh, we went there, and then we went and saw a movie under the stars, and it was beautiful. Now, Amanda and our friends who came with us, Loretto and Rosalba, Amanda and Loretto both thought we were going to go see a film about Caravaggio. And I kept saying, it's Perugino, not Caravaggio. And he blamed me. And then I looked at the text thread, and I don't think I said Caravaggio. I think he and I came to the same conclusion, because great minds think alike. Perhaps. I think. Or I said it, and I just I think there's also a it. documentary on Caravaggio that's Probably. playing. Probably. And, and that Loretto and I really want to go see. Both of you conflated that we were going to go see that one. I don't know why. I really thought it was Caravaggio. And I kept saying that. And then I know Perugino means little sort of a pet name for someone from Perugia. From Perugia, Italy. And yet yeah. I still keep spelling it wrong and mm. it's driving me crazy. But anyway. So it's such a weird thing to get caught up on, but I spelt it wrong in the text thread afterwards. And I'm like, but I knew it's not Piero Gino. No, it's Perugino. Yeah. yeah. That's not even the artist's name. He just happens to be from near no, Perugia. It, it would be like Torontino. Yeah, you could call me Torontino because yeah. I was born here. And you, we could call you Bastonalina. And see, as an Italian, a newly minted Italian, I know these things now. Right. So Have someone we talked from about Boston. the fact that I became Italian? I don't know. No, I don't think we did. Wow. Lots to cover. We don't have that much time. Well, maybe th- we can cover that today. Maybe we can. So, all this to say, I don't even want to talk about the film. I want to talk sure. about the experience. Please. So, I didn't realize this is what was going to happen. So, Amanda gets these tickets. We go to the restaurant and... The movies are being shown out in the piazza, like out in the open air. Yeah. Did you not know that? I didn't. Oh, you thought it was inside. No, I didn't. I didn't give it much thought. I think you had told me after we bought the tickets, but I thought we were going to go see them like at Soul Pepper, or one of the theaters. Really? That, yeah. I well, didn't. that's where they go. They go inside the theater if there's rain. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. 
I had told you that when I got the tickets. Wait a minute. So the, if it rains, they, you go into Soul Pepper to see it? Yeah, but I don't know how they... Oh, no, there's two theaters at Soul Pepper, so that would make sense. Okay. They would put those... Because what we found out was that there's actually two viewings, two, the, two outdoor theaters at the same time. One in the big piazza, and then one where we saw ours in the smaller piazza, or the smaller cobblestone square. Now, you would say, how are you going to see a film in a cobblestone piazza? And what they do is they have blown up these couches. So they have these inflatable, inflatable couches, couches that you sit in to watch this fi- these films. And they give you headphones where you get to watch the film and hear everything without being disturbed by the trains that go by or the people who are just walking through the squares mm-hmm. or a dog or what whatnot that mm-hmm. might you might hear the noises of while you're there. And it was delightful. It was. It was so it was. delightful to be in a square outside watch the night fall as you're watching a film it was wonderful yeah i i had said to them the last time i guess i've seen an outdoor film i think you and i saw goonies outdoor and ghostbusters at a park but there is something really magical about buying a ticket and having a seat and going to an outdoor movie event there's something really magical about, and you know, a concession stand there, and um, and it's it's different than the drive-in theater, the also, drive-in movie theater, which I also love, by the, the way. The quality of the film being projected on that screen, mm-hmm. you cannot compare to when you go see a film in a park that's being put on by the city or like a mm, yeah, possibly. It I, was it was beautiful. Like I it was think like it's seeing also it. an artistic event, full of artistic people sure. watching an artistic movie, drinking wine or having chocolate or whatever it is, but there's something really beautiful and celebratory and elevated about that experience. Sure. And magical, I think, you know, being outside. Yeah. For me, it was, uh, you know, being comfortable watching the film and I'll say it again, the quality of the actual film is, is as if you saw it in the movie theater. Sure. Yeah. And it was wonderful, and I had a great time, and I was comfortable. Well, once we went on separate couches, well, they're we, a little tight for. They were tight for two people of our stature. Sure, and <laughs> and uh, and our, I think our friends had a good time. I hope they did. Yeah, I, I think have, they did. Listen, they I always did. have a good time with them, so I'm hoping it's they true. Had a good time. You know, it's an interesting thing too because once we booked it, I was like, who would like an experience like that who likes to travel because to me it feels like a very european experience they actually just got back from tuscany and so much of the film featured tuscany of course and the art of florence in the 1500s and and umbria as well and umbria as well yeah. yeah um and perugia and yeah and the surrounding areas but florence was certainly a big perugia and umbria yes okay yeah well there you go Mm -hmm. um so it was a beautiful experience. I'd love to go back. We found out a little late in the game that we got these bracelets with our tickets and that we'd get all these free cocktails or sample, I don't know, cocktails, but sample y Yeah, we didn't, we didn't things. go to get the, the, the cocktails that, that were available, but rather we got iced coffee, which I spilt. Yeah, me too. I managed to get it in my hair and everywhere else. I spilt it right in front of where people have to go walk in well that's what it is but it was a lavazza nitro brew mm-hmm. i actually quite enjoyed it i didn't like it i well, wish i got the other thing. one the that's nitro not brews thing. do nothing for I me know. what was the other one just an iced coffee and i think i would have enjoyed that more what was i drinking the nitro brew i got four nitro brews i don't know what i was thinking well i know i don't like nitro brews well i enjoyed it for what it's worth and uh even when i Somehow managed to get it in my hair. I still haven't figured out how I got it down my back and in my hair, but um, it was splashy. I think it's those inflatable couches. They're kind of like being on a watercraft. I will say that. Okay, fair enough. Anyways, we had a great experience. (laughs) Coffee spills aside. Or maybe because of. Or maybe because of. Maybe they enhanced the night. and And though I was grumbling about it, when Amanda first asked me, I was glad we did it. Mm-hmm. Amanda, and I was glad we invited our lovely friends, too. Yeah, it's always nice to have. A, a well, it just was a nice... I, I think, you know, for me, I've I've um, come to the realization that we live in a fun and exciting city and a fun and exciting country. But I think with anything, no matter where you live, 
nothing happens if you don't plan. It's true. And I think you and I, because of the nature of our work, especially, most especially, um, we tend to not be able to plan things in advance. We tend to have to kind of wait till the weekend of or the day of. And uh, I think that's an okay way to be. I think our work, like I say, most often dictates that. But I think maybe we've let our work dictate that sure. so much sure. that I do think, oh, I didn't plan for that. I didn't, that came and went and I didn't partake in it. And that happens a lot in a big city, right? You're too busy living in it to enjoy it. So I really tried to make it my mission this summer, this year, to plan so that those little things that that do happen to actually make a point to see if I can't go and to enjoy time with friends and plan with sure, friends because sure. it's just something that uh, you and I, I think, can make more of a priority. It was delightful. I had a great time and mm-hmm. I would do it again. And uh, I would want to take take advantage of all the freebies that were offered. Totally. The other film in the big piazza looked amazing too. It was an Indian film mm-hmm. and there was some... Indian or Bollywood dancing that was happening on the stage prior to the mm-hmm. to the actual film, mm-hmm. and that looked fascinating too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think you have a new interest in Bollywood dance. I do. I do. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Probably not just yet. Okay. But I will talk more about that. So that's a little hint of what foreshadowing foreshadowing what will come in the next few weeks um, mm-hmm. for our listeners. I wanted to mention Amanda. So I've been looking up. Roses that are named after famous people. Okay, what brought this on? I don't even know what brought it on. Well, I want to hear about them. Because I went to the garden store today. Okay. Is that what you call it? It, I do now. Okay, so I went to the garden store because I wanted to buy cilantro because Amanda said we don't have any cilantro. Say cilantro or cilantro. Cilantro. Or you could say... Cilantro. Coriander. Hmm. So I went to the store, the garden store, and I bought some cilantro even though... It was a bit heady. It didn't look so great. It was on sale, obviously. They're Where is to... the garden store? What, like... Fiesta Farms. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a little grocery store. has a little farm area. And I bought lo- bay laurel, which I've wanted. Mm-hmm. Expensive. Mm-hmm. 11 bucks mm-hmm. for a little tiny one. But I'm like, it's going to grow into a tree. Yeah. And I'm going to take care of it. And I'm really excited. And then I bought rue, R-U-E, which I had never heard of. Yeah. And rue is a herb that you that you can use in certain dishes but less is more you don't want to use too much is what i've read but it's also good for pains and aches and inflammation and arthritis i have all of that so if you rub it supposedly if you rub it into your arthritic hands feet chin i don't know what else gets arthritis well i don't really get arthritis on my chin um but i certainly get it in my wrists elbows my fingers sure my joints so you can rub rue or the rue oil Mm -hmm. into it and sure enough amanda came home and i planted the rue and the rue looked a little bit sad and i gave it water and now it looks like it's having a grand old time where i planted (laughs) it amanda's like my arm is sore it's really sore so i said let me grab some rue and she amanda looked at me and said what is what's going on here because i hadn't told her i bought rue and i rubbed your arm with rue Mm mm-hmm and you said a few minutes later, it feels better. Yeah, it did. It was actually kind of, I don't know if it was psychosomatic. I don't know. I don't care. I didn't feel the pain anymore. So anyways, I don't know. Somehow that led me to looking into roses named after famous people. And I, I'm, okay. And I'm just looking at some of the roses. There's some, photo, some photos of them. Of there some must of be them. some named after Queens of England, I, I gotta say. Oh, well, there's certainly one named after Princess Diana, and it's a pretty rose. Oh, really? But the rose that I think is really beautiful is the one that is named after Monet. The okay. Monet rose is beautiful. There's an Elizabeth Taylor rose. There's a... She got a rose? A Betty White rose, which is beautiful. Wow. The level of fame to have a plant named yeah. after you is the pretty amazing. Barbara Streisand rose. Are you kidding? And she said each rose these has... These are great gifts for people who are fans of these people. 100%. 100% yeah. Amanda. That's a great, great idea. Should I get my dad Barbara Streisand roses for she, his birthday? Is she a fan of Barbara Streisand? My dad? Rose? Yeah, I mean, sorry. Is, 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 <laughs> Do you know something about my dad? Is, I don't. Is Barbara Streisand a fan of your dad's? I don't think. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know. Okay, so knowing what, my dad, they could have met and 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 they could be emailing each other, and I wouldn't know. Okay, so let me just tell you about the Barbara Streisand rose since we're fixated on this. <laughs> we tell me about my dad. <laughs> 
I think it's the perfect gift for your father, for any father, really. <laughs> so the Barbara Streisand Road was very... Rose. Rose. What did I say? I think you said road. And she probably does have a road she named has after her, roads. too. Speaking of which, I have, a, I have a road story, but we'll have to save it for next week's episode. A road scholar story? No. So the Barbara Streisand Rose was very selective when picking a rose that will bear her name. So she was actually very selective. The singer had said that if a flower was to be named after her, she would want it to smell good and be disease-free. The rose created by Tom Carruth in 2001 lived up to the expectations oh with its rich lavender blooms that are combined with an intense citrus-like fragrance. Okay. The plants are clothed or clothed with lush foliage mm-hmm. that is very disease resistant. Okay. This is this comes from the smell of roses.com in case okay. you want to see it. This is a rose with a family history, Amanda. All right. Its mother is an unnamed sister seedling of the Lagerfeld rose and New Zealand rose is its father. Okay. So the sister seedling is Lagerfeld and the father is New Zealand. No idea what that means, in case you're wondering. Okay, I was wondering, yeah. Both parents are fine examples of fragrant roses, but their offspring handily outdoes them both. Okay. So both the New Zealand and the Lagerfeld are beautifully smelt roses, is what I gather. Its, fra- its fragrance, this is the Barbara Streisand rose, mm-hmm. is ravishing and deeply scented. Barbara Streisand Rose is being registered as a mauve blend. Okay. Which does not do it justice to how finely it's colored. The majority of the modern mauve roses have too much red or too much blue in their petals. Okay. This rose, the Barbara Streisand Rose, Mm -hmm. got it right. And so its colors remain pure throughout its life. Never graying. Oh wow! So the hybrid, so the type of rose is a hybrid tea rose. Okay. The color is lavender with darker edges. All right. The petal count is twenty six to thirty petals. I was wondering. The fragrance is strong citrus like scent. Like her. The, the breeder is Tom Carruth. Like any good breeder. The year was two thousand and one. Uh, the year I moved to Toronto. And in two thousand and four, it was named the Barbara Streisand Rose. And there you have it. And there you have it. And that's our episode. And you know what we'll do, Amanda? Mm -hmm. For the patron episode, we'll go through a bunch of roses. Okay. All right? Until then, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, on behalf of Bastonalina. And Torontono. uh, No, it would be Torontino. Torontono. Okay. That means you're bigger. (laughs) Okay. Uh, We we wish you (laughs) a pleasant evening wherever you are. And uh, we hope you were able to listen and sleep.